um, you know, there's a lot of research that would say where you go to college has very little to do with your lifetime success. Mm -hmm. Your engagement level in the ages of 18 to 23 have a lot to do with your lifetime success. Um, so I would say I'd like to, at a minimum, meet that student in the seventh grade, not as a sophomore, because the math and science curriculum that you're on in the seventh grader has a lot of impact in what your opportunities are going to be six years later. Um, I draw their arm or, or, or kind of turn the historical notion of rankings on their head to say that if I'm in Massachusetts and I'm an engineering student, likely the best opportunity for me as a middle income to low income student is actually the UMass Amherst Honors Program um, and to pursue its uh, engineering degree. Now you'd be hard pressed to walk to a sidewalk in Boston and ask somebody, because we're all experts, right? We all went to college, so everybody's experts on the topic where the best engineering schools are for students that are middle and low income coming out of, of a high school in Massachusetts. You'd be even further hard pressed to arm a guidance counselor at a school with boards of directors to go in and say, hey, I've got great news. Our very top kids this year are going to the UMass Amherst Honors Program. And for that counselor to maintain a job sitting in a boardroom with a bunch of board members that did not to go, go to places like UMass Amherst, when in fact it's the exact right answer for ensuring that those students cost-effectively maximize their education and their career opportunities with the goal of creating a more stable financial future. So the paradigm here is much more complex than literally merely matching. Now, there's great irony in the current matching because who knew that Jeff Brinzel at Yale can't find the very kids that we're sitting on a panel here banging on him to say, why can't you find more of these kids? And the truth is, because of what's exposed, you have a broken process. The only way I find these kids is if I buy their name and address from the SAT or from the ACT and I direct mail them. But the problem is when you show up with a piece of direct mail in the mailbox of a kid in the Detroit public school system, or it shows up in the mailbox of a kid in rural Missouri, A, they don't know who you are, and B, everyone around them is quick to let them know that that school is not for them. They can't afford it. It's not accessible. So the paradigms by which you have to peel back the layers to drive engagement means that you actually have to get into the relationship development business and out of a marketing and facade business where instead of focusing on the outcomes of what our institution does for the very types of students that are like you and is held accountable to those things, I'll go a quick sidebar. If I was in the financial services industry and I did what we did in higher education every day to its customer, you would go to jail for it. We do it in, in higher ed on a routine basis. We'll tell kids 98% of our graduates get jobs. What we don't tell them is that only 19% of the incoming freshman class graduated in six years. And what we really meant to say was that 19% of the incoming freshman class in six years, 98% of them got jobs. We don't tell that story. No one's held accountable to telling that story. So it, the, the layers at which you have to peel back this paradigm start with an empowering a consumer to go create a marketplace where the consumer has choice, the consumer can vote with their feet, and the issue with that is that you've got layers and layers and layers of misconception on a system that's designed around elitism and not a system that's designed around access and outcomes.